là-dessus. All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Bob Alman, and, and I've been an advisor with the University of California for the extension. That is all good. I've been in my position for just a little over a year, so I'm not going to assist myself in that area. And this is my first time in medical, but I feel a little much different from home. So it's interesting that uh, in that perspective. So uh, we have talked about this. Uh, Warm it found last year, not to scare you, but you know, it's not going to be, it's going to look like it's going to be a big deal, uh, but at least we can know what it is and uh, going forward, uh, happens to be test or established, we have tools available to manage. So, at least this is an effort to kind of get the information out and look for it if we ever find it in our office. So, uh see yeah all this that's fine uh okay so uh, yeah last year um first week of october i got a couple of calls from the total pcs and they have seen this form now top of the field all these species have been working in that area for 30, 40 years, so they have never seen this. And of course, we've been there for a year. I have no clue either, so uh, we all are kind of puzzled and quite this. So we just found this larvae, and uh, it doesn't look like anything but we have seen in terms of form, form complex in alfalfa. And this is just not like one field, it has been uh, found in several. You know, multiple fields, a valley, a couple hundred of acres were sprayed with different uh, pesticides, uh, steward, and some people did spray it with BT products. So they're just trying to get some control over it. Uh, so then we, of course, don't know that what it is. So a lot of people started to call it that it's the leaf holder because the way, you know, in case of the, the damage looks like. And some people call it leaf grower, some people call it tackle worm. So there's a lot of names put around, you know. So that is one of those things, you know, as an ITM advisor, but it quite is, you know. Again, you just uh, you know the name first, you know, if you look at the literature or if it has been any problem in any other places. Anyway, so the first thing was try to understand or identify what it is. And First thing I wrote to this uh, USD specialist that hey, uh, I have this larvae, can you identify it? Uh, he said, Oh, we can only identify it using the adult stage of the insect, not the larvae. And at that time, we were kind of running the insect in the lab. So, myself and Don Colombo in Tiguma, we were both running this insect to get the adults. And uh, also, I sent some larvae. Uh, to UC Riverside because using some DNA barcode technique, you can kind of get an idea of what it is or what group it is. So finally, uh, we got the name of the insect. It is called Alpha leaf here. So uh, confirmed by CPFA people. Also, Michael Redwich, you know, he also had some idea about it. But anyway, finally, we got to the name of this insect. It is called Alpha leaf tire because it ties the leaf together and make it shell. That's how the name came into out of the leaf tire. So this is the adult uh, of alpha leaf here. It's a light copper color, has some black markings on it. And we have a pack sheet on it. And I can share that and it's available in uh, Imperial County you know, newsletter. Uh, and again, it has this uh, antennae, also some snout-like mouth parts. So sometimes, you know, you get confused to use this antenna with this mouth part. But uh, again, you don't really going to encounter much the adults because this, this is a nocturnal case. So mostly you're going to see the larvae on the leaf, even on the alpha plant, just to uh, know uh, what adult 
Okay, you know, there's not a lot of information about this pair. So we look at the literature and this pair belongs to one of the family, Jalesi. And we know in that family there are several serious pairs. We all know about two ball ones now on cotton, how serious it is or it was. Uh, again, there are several serious pairs in the species community of this insect. So this insect has the potential to become serious if it ever establish an alfalfa or any other uh, crops. So this is a little bit of information. Again, these are some of those insects of this uh, relative of this insect. It look very similar, isn't it? So uh, okay, it's all these insects belong to the family of Jalisi. So the, some of this damage, you know, once you are in the field and note this is the damage symptom, you're not going to miss it because but, you know, then if you're driving or passing by an alfalfa field. You see this white teeth uh, spread pretty much evenly throughout the field. Some of the insect infestation we see in spot, but this insect I have seen several fields pretty much kind of spread out evenly throughout the field. So looking closely, I don't know if you can see well. So the, see all this leaf, basically all the green materials are chewed up, leaving only the skin on the leaf. So that gives the uh, white color. Again, the reason it, people call it taco worm, you can see all these high foliated leaves that put it together and tie and inside the structure, the larvae will feed. And there are four different larvae insects. So, pretty much once they're inside that shell, they're going to eat up the entire thing. And it's difficult for insecticides to get in contact with the larvae unless it's uh, some sort of systemic product. Uh, Mostly this infestation you'll see on the upper portion of the plant, but in case of heavy infestation, the entire plant can be uh, infested. And in that case, you know, this is uh, some of the pictures from a field where we had heavy infestation. So from top to bottom, everything was chewed up. And once you have that cutting, you have nothing but those sticks, very light. Right? So it's pretty bad if it gets, you know, or in a under heavy infested condition. You know, we see other worms in the field. So, um, you know, alfalfa weevil, or uh, you see heat army worm, somewhat similar, but the one way to distinguish between this larvae are this markings. So this heat army worm would have some of these uh, longitudinal uh, lines. Again, alfalfa weevil, you see this, you know, broad white marking. But this insect, alfalfa leaf dyer, won't have any marking. It's a plain, you know, uh, body, greenish body. Also, again, the, looking at the damage of the leaf, you can distinguish whether it's a uh, alfalfa weevil or a you know, leaf dyer. This is another close picture. Uh, John Palumbo uh, took that, and uh, you can see there's a, another segment behind the head. It's called full parasitic segment. That not only the head is black, but that segment is also black. See that even the leg, the first you know, three pairs of leg, uh, the first pair of leg is also black. So that's a very telltale sign that this is alfalfa leaf here. Very unique feature of this insect, uh, the full thoracic dark segment. Uh, I read this insect in the lab to look at different light. Phases. So the egg is really small, tiny. I mean, there's no way you can see them you know, in few conditions. So that's an egg compared to an alfalfa seed there. You can see how small that is. And uh, again, egg is not going to be helpful in terms of scouting or anything. Uh, this is a grown up larvae, about seven millimeter long, and these are pupae. So again, the larvae will feed on those, you know, cases of the structure, and again, you see the pupae inside those shells. So these are the two structures we are pretty much going to encounter in the field. If we have that case in the field. Again, that's the uh, moss. There are not a lot of information uh, currently available for this insect. Uh, this insect has been uh, reported mostly 
from a kind of biodiversity perspective, not a pest of many crops, but uh, one area in India, it was, a, it was recorded as a pest of soil. Uh, and, you know, it had some serious damage and uh, I communicated with that to a particular scientist and that it happens to be a serious pest in that area. And again, this is another uh, article from England, and they also reported this insect. Uh, again, this insect is kind of distributed throughout the world, many parts of the world. It's not, again, when you find something new, you always think that like it is a native or that it come from somewhere else. But with my kind of you know, literature survey or kind of understanding this space or this insect is already here. It's a kind of native uh, insect. And uh, it's again, as I said, it has been reported from other parts of the world and it appears to be a dry and warm climate uh, insect. And again, as I said, that uh, insect was a uh, pest of soybean in India. And this part of India, the Bangalore is here, so he knows about Rajasthan. So this is a like, desert in India. So it is not surprising to see this insect showing up in our desert. So it has some of the climatic. Uh, preference, I would say. On the global database, this insect has been, as I said, reported in different places. Um, then I kind of zoomed in Australia. You know, it has been reported from Australia. And in Australia, it has been reported from different parts of Australia. And if you look at this map, the, you know, kind of weather map or the uh, different climatic zone map, you see this insect is distributed mostly on the kind of warm side. So again, it tells me that you know, this is going to be a warm climate uh, pest. Uh, it's not going to be in the north, most likely in the north kind of the southwestern pest. This also has been reported from several places in the US, as I say, but not as a pest of alfalfa or any crop. Um, mostly reported from Florida and Mississippi. And there was a report from California itself in San Diego County where they did some light trapping and this insect came in and got stuck. And you know, the researcher or whoever is capturing it identified the alfalfa leaf there, but never seen anything on the alfalfa or any other crop. So this is going to be our first report of this insect from alfalfa. On this region. So, we last year we saw this uh, insect in Imperial County, uh, also in Riverside County, and on, on the across the state line in the La Paz County and Puma County. So, you know, PCS have seen this insect uh, infesting alfalfa fields in these four counties. Again, we don't know other than alfalfa, one of the other folks, but uh, some of those uh, report from other you know, uh, countries, they say uh, it feeds on soybean, pheasant pea, clover, sasvinia. So <coughs> all plants are in the family, leguminous, you know, plants. Okay, alpha is one of them. So these are all leguminous family crop. And again, if you think about the other relative of this insect, for example, uh, Pink ballworm. Pink ballworm. It has a very restricted host range. For example, it feeds on cotton, hibiscus, and okra. So again, this insect, the insect of this family, they are very restricted in their host range. So, for example, alfalfa leaf there is going to be totally restricted to a leguminous crop, what are the kind of house crop. So one thing it comes to my mind: what are the house crop we have? Uh, we have mesquite. You wonder, mesquite is also in the family leguminous. So it is possible. I mean, this is my hypothesis. I have not been able to pursue a whole lot. This we may have these insects feeding on a lot of these mesquites with what we have around, and this is probably an event where this insect might have kind of expanded its host to alfalfa. And this sometimes, you know, it happens in nature. So this could be an opportunistic event or may you know going forward may try to establish more and more so we don't know so that's what 
you know, we are trying to look, keep an eye on. Okay. Of course, we really have a lot of tools available if it happens to you know establish an alpha because this insect or the Delisti family we have a lot of pheromones developed already, so it will be easy for uh, easy to develop pheromones against this insect. Again, a lot of these nocturnal insects uh, can be captured using light traps, so that is going to be our monitoring tool. I did a very small, uh, you know, efficacy trial when this space was available in the commercial field. So there is a field they are going to spray in that evening, and I took some tarps and kind of sprayed uh, a couple of blocks. And I looked at three products in Pepit, Graviton, and the seeds. And 10 days after treatment, we must have saw about 70 to 77% in the mortality. But again, I I, I was still able to find some of the larvae inside those shells, so it was kind of hard to uh, feel those young you know, larvae being inside the shell. So, we find again this year we will do some more efficacy trial to see what kind of product. Again, as opposed to some of the other worms, you know, they kind of crawl around the plants and they come in contact, but this insect is going to feed on the structure. So that's the challenge to get the product into the insect. Again, with that, uh, I'd like to thank the PCS who brought this uh, to my attention and Michael Retrix, John Palumbo. We're working together, and okay, it happens to be a problem this year. With the thank you for the opportunity. What kind of the years to show up? Show up the other. So uh, again, a lot of information. So we started to see that early on, you know, October. So probably it started somewhere in September. And I kept, you know, sweeping up up by around the whole area. And I saw that until last month. But as the weather warming up, I have not seen them 